So the Honorable Prime Minister in his plenary speech has stressed on the need for partnership between academia and industry in the field of education. He has emphasized the importance of having fruitful discussions, which will lead to beneficial solutions for the redefining of learning and skilling on the same foot, footing. This would in turn provide universal access to learning and would create a new energy to take the country forward on the path of progress. Now I would like to give my report on the breakout session six, which had the theme re-envisioning teachers education and developing diets as vibrant institutes of excellence. For this session six, the chair was Sri Sanjay Kumar sir, Secretary, Department of School Education and Literacy, uh, Ministry of Education, Government of India. The co-chair was Srimati Prachi Pandey, Joint Secretary, Dosal, Ministry of Education, Government of India. And we had three main panelists, Professor Saroj Sharma, Chairperson, NIOS, who spoke on the restructuring of diets and ICT implementation. Then we had Professor K. Ramachandran, advisor NIPA, who spoke on curriculum reforms, transaction, and capacity building and continuous professional development. We also had the third panelist, Dr. Ashok Pandey from GEMS Education India, who spoke on identification of potential shortfalls and remedial measures. In the interactive session, we had eight expert members, all of them from the field of education, who spoke on various sub-themes uh, for making diets, vibrant institutions of excellence. They were Ms. Charu Mani, Principal DAV Public School Gurugram, Dr. Renu Singh, Young Lives, Professor Ajay Surana, Head, Department of Education, Banasthali Vidyapit, Ms. Deepa Chandran, Principal Sri Sharda Vidyalaya Kaladi Kochi, Sri Anustup Nayak, Central Square Foundation, Professor, Professor Sharat Sinha, Head, Teacher Education, NCERT, Sri Robin Chetri, Director, SCRT Sikkim, and Ms. Bhagyalakshmi Balaji, Associate Director, Room to Read. We had a wide participation and we got a lot of suggestions in the comment box also. So in the Honorable Finance Minister, in her budget speech, uh, she mentioned, she announced that teachers' training will be re-envisioned through innovative pedagogy, curriculum transaction, continuous professional development, dipstick surveys, and ICT, the District Institutes of, Institutes of Education and Training Diet, will be developed as vibrant institutes of excellence for this purpose. In line with the same, we had our discussions. We got a large number of recommendations, which we will be giving in detail in our detailed reports. Due to the constraint uh, time limit of 10 minutes, I will be highlighting a few recommendations, uh, uh, some of the highlights in this session. Most of the problems areas that were identified as far as diets were concerned are the ones on the, you can see on the screen. And I will straight away go into the recommendations that we received for each of them. It was very clear from the discussions that an institutional development plan has to be put in place to reinvigorate and restructure diets. This would require a 10 year perspective plan for implementation in a time bound manner this institutional development plan would consist of the following components. First is the curricular aspect. This curricular aspect would promote uh, include promotion of act actions to achieve student excellence, academic excellence, faculty excellence, excellence in research, staff excellence, and excellence in governance, leadership, and management. This would also include the curricula to be made in line with the transition to a four-year integrated teacher education program following the four stages of school education, five plus three plus three plus four, as against the diploma courses currently being run in the diets. For achieving academic excellence, emphasis is to be laid on curricula, teaching, learning, and assessment. Multilingualism should be addressed in the curriculum transaction of diets. Special focus is to be given on inputs of the local area in the curriculum. Now, when we went for, uh, to the second segment, which was the infrastructure, the recommendations that flowed were 
that a robust infrastructure for all diets is to be put in place to create a positive and motivating environment for teachers and learnings. A, a need assessment of the infrastructure is to be carried out depending on the courses to be run and the activity to be carried out in the diets. The infrastructure should also take care that there is a resource center which would simulate a classroom setting and would be equipped with adequate technological and digital infrastructure. The next, uh, the next one was ICT intervention. As far as that is concerned, diets must focus on ensuring equitable use of technology, promotion of Indian languages and sign languages to ICT, and reimagining vocational education. There should be established of a virtual lab, effective use of AI, and computer-assisted learning. The next important point was continuous professional development. 50 hours of CPD has been mandated in NEP 2020. In line with the same, diet should have an action plan to implement the same, vocational education. There should be established of a virtual lab, effective use of AI, and computer-assisted learning. The next important point was continuous professional development. 50 hours of CPD has been mandated in NEP 2020. In line with the same, diet should have an action plan to implement the same. There should be regular interaction with experts and academicians from outside the diet. Exposure to international and national universities, seminars, conferences, and other institutions should be given to the faculty and teachers of diets so that there can be sharing and learning from best practices. Diets should also be exposed to demonstrational teachings of experts. And a calendar for continuous professional development should be chalked out to upskill in-service teachers with 21st century skills. The next important point that a recommendation which came forth was in the field of capacity building. Effective capacity building measures should be undertaken for enhancing competencies of the teachers in the diets. The staff strength is to be optimized for pre-service and in-service teachers and courses. A district development plan, education plan, is to be prepared by each diet in consultation with BRCs, CRCs, and SCRT. Adequate support should be given to the CRCs and BRCs by the diets. The diets should also take the mantle of mentoring of schools in their district. The next recommendation on the main point came regarding interlinkages between NCRT, SCRT, diet, BRC, and CRC. Better synergy and coordination should be present between all the levels to take care of the aspects of pre-service as well as in-service teacher training. Proper mechanism for monitoring and assessment of learning outcomes should also be evolved at all levels. The next important recommendation came from the point extending the role of diets to also support the private schools. Extending the role of diets to also support the private schools in terms of institutional development plan, curricular transaction, CPD, in-service training, etc. because currently the diets are largely relegated to government schools. The next point was embedding internal and external accountability for continuous assessment of the standards of the diets and their accreditation. And the last recommendation which came through was in the new teacher education system of integrated teacher education program, the RIE model could be adopted for running ITEP and other teacher education programs currently run by diet and to be run by diet if allowed, which should be aligned with NEP, wherein the affiliation of the courses would be with the university and the administrative control would be with the diets, as in the case of the RIEs, which are presently successfully running. So in conclusion, I would like to submit that transformation of diets as vibrant institutes of learning excellence for teacher training and teacher education is a visionary initiative of the government of India, which will enable an India-centric education system that contributes directly to transforming our nation sustainably into an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all, thereby placing India 
as a Vishnu Guru in education. Thank you, sir.